What's up, everybody? Happy Thursday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Getting into this episode of YNR, um, Connor is back. It was, it was good to see Connor again. Um, for a kid his age, he's clearly smart and knows something ain't right. You know what I mean? He's, you know, trying to figure things out why they're back in town. Um, it was somewhat good to see Anita with her scheme in behind. I like the fact that, um, you know, Chelsea was going to give her mom a million dollars, you know, because she wanted to take care of her mother. But I was surprised, as well as Chelsea was, that Anita declined the million dollars. I was shocked by that because we all know Anita loves money. You know what I mean? So she must got something she working. She must got some type of plan she working on. Like she must be doing something because who turns down a million dollars? A million dollars. She's up to something with somebody because ain't no way any other time she would have turned down that kind of money. But um, my thing about Chelsea is because she kind of annoys me a little bit. It's like you don't want nothing to do with Adam but like she wants nothing to do with Adam but she refuses you know to leave the town that he lives in I don't get it why would you want to move back to a town where Adam lives and you want nothing to do with him she didn't want Connor to really have nothing to do with him but why are you back in that town then that doesn't make sense. You have five million dollars. You have 49 other states that you can move to. You can move to a whole nother country. Why would you move back to Genoa City, the same town as a person that you want nothing to do with? You don't want your son to have anything to do with. Why would you do that? Obviously, Chelsea's lying. Um, And I think her mother knows that she's lying. She's not being honest. It's clear as day that she still wants to be with Adam. That's obvious. You know, she's sitting there talking about, well, Adam has changed. You know, he's this evil person. He's this. Adam is the same person you've always known him to be. You know, she knows good and well Adam has different sides to him. He has the good guy side where he can be warm, nice. And then he has that side to him where if you cross him, He's an SOB. You know what I mean? Like, she knows that about Adam. So why is this all, is she acting like this is all a surprise now? He hasn't changed. Adam has always been Adam. And she's been well aware of that for years now. Don't try to switch up act brand new, because Adam definitely hasn't been acting brand new. Every scene we've seen of Adam since he's came back, since he's come back, he's Adam. Nothing about him has changed. You know? He just, he is who he is. Either you accept it or you don't. And I feel like she's lying to herself. Um, So, of course, now Chelsea has to break the news to Connor about Adam being alive and stuff like that. Which I'm glad that she's telling him because he has a right to know. Um, And him and Adam did have great scenes together before Adam supposedly died. So, you know, Adam has, in my opinion... Adam has every right to be a part of both his children's lives. Like he doesn't want his kids growing up, not knowing who their dad is or having some type of resentment towards their dad the same way he did towards Victor. He doesn't want his kids growing up like that. He wants to have a better relationship with his children than he does with Victor. You know, he doesn't want his relationship one day with his sons to be as combative and toxic as his relationship to Victor has been all these years. That's not what he wants. He wants to break that cycle. You know what I mean? I can't fault Adam for that. Not at all. Because you want different. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't want to go through... You don't want your children to go through what you went through when you were younger or what you're currently going through. You know what I mean? You don't want that for your kids. So I don't blame him. And it's like Chelsea, Nick, they can't see that point of view. The only point of view they can see is their own point of view. That's the only point of view they care about. That's the only point of view they want to see. At the end of the day, that's the problem. They keep saying, oh, we're thinking about the kids. No, you're thinking about yourselves. Everything that you do stems from what you want, not for the best interest of those kids. 
in my opinion, despite what they think of Adam, he's not a danger to those children. He genuinely cares for both his sons. He genuinely loves both his sons. And in my opinion, he has every right to know them and they have every right to know him because I have a feeling that if Chelsea and Nick keep going the way that they're going, once those kids get older and they find out the whole truth and everything that's been happening when they were younger, they're going to end up resenting Chelsea and Nick. That's what's going to happen. We see it all the time on these shows. The kids grow up, they resent the parents, you know. So it's best to just tell the whole truth now instead of trying to conceal it when you know when they get older, they're going to find out. Hello, they can Google. They do look like Adam. So, of course, they're going to put two and two together and somebody's going to slip up and say something at some point. So why keep concealing the truth? Might as well just spill all the tea. Tell everything. Um. So anyway, I have to agree with some people. I feel like... It, it's, it's a few things that could be happening with Billy. Either he's having a mental nervous breakdown or he's being drugged or I agree. I think he's being gaslighted. It's possible that Chloe could be gaslighting him to do her bidding when it comes to Adam. Because she already tried to kill Adam. It didn't work. So maybe she's thinking about gaslighting Billy to do it because she know that if she goes to Billy outright and ask him to do it, she know Billy won't do it. So maybe she thinks, oh, messing with his mind and stuff like that, uh, making him think Delia's ghost is trying to talk to him from beyond the grave or something will make him want to do her bidding and finally get rid of Adam, something that she failed to do more than once. Um, if if this is Chloe gaslighting him or someone else gaslighting him, I feel like it's cruel. It's messed up because it's super crew to make him relive what happened to his daughter all over again to make him think that she's contacting him is so crew. Um, even Sharon was looking at Billy when he was talking, like basically implying that Delia's ghost is speaking to him. Even Sharon was looking at him like he was kind of crazy. She like, please tell me you don't think that your daughter's ghost is trying to contact you. Because Sharon thought that same thing when it was Mariah gaslighting her for Victor. Sharon thought the same thing, that it was Cassie's ghost haunting her and stuff like that over, you know, the whole Christian paternity secret. You know, she thought that that was, you know, Cassie. So she knows what Billy's going through. But I think if she put two and two together, she could bring up maybe he's being gaslight, you know, maybe, you know. Um, but my thing with Billy is I, I feel bad for him and his grief. But. My big issue with Billy is he refuses to accept his role in all of this. He refuses to accept any responsibility for the role that he played in in the death of his daughter. He keeps blaming the whole thing on Adam. Chloe keeps blaming the whole thing on Adam. Why are they not placing any blame on Billy? Any parent with a grain of any type of sense would know if you go to a store at night, especially on any type of dark road you do not leave your minor child in the car by themselves anything can happen like they can obviously get out the car go into the street get hit or somebody can see a child in the car get in the car and drive off with the child anything can happen when you leave a little kid in the car by themselves i don't care if it's at night or during the day you don't do it no time of day. It don't matter what time of day it is. You never do that when they're that young. You know what I'm saying? Unless they're like 14, 15 years old, you know, a teenager, that's different. But a child, no, you don't do that. That's something you don't do. Even when Billy confronted Victor, when they found out that Victor knew Adam did it and blackmailed Adam to keep quiet. Um, I love how Victor turned it around on Billy. As harsh as it may seem, Victor was throwing facts in Billy's face. You're the one who left the child in the car by herself. You have to take some responsibility for that. Over the years, Billy has refused to take responsibility. He has never owned up to it. He's, he just put everything off on Adam. I think the reason he does that is because it's easier because he refuses to face what he did. Because it's going to make him feel even more guiltier than he feels. He just refuses to acknowledge it. So it's easier for him to throw all the blame on Adam instead of some of it on himself, too. 
And that's what he should do. He needs to finally own up to his part. You can't blame Adam for everything. Adam was stupid for covering it up. But I believe Adam truly is regretful of what happened that night. And it's going to haunt Adam as well for the rest of his life. I know some people think, well, you know, Adam hit that girl and it still hasn't changed him. But look at Victor. Victor played a part in what happened to Colleen dying. And he got her heart. I mean, Victor played a part in what happened to Colleen dying and he got her heart and he still hasn't changed. You know, and Victor hasn't changed really at all. He's done some horrible things since that happened. So, you know, it is what it is. But Billy just needs to own up to his stuff. Um. So anyway, moving on from that. I really wish Abby would stop playing games with Nate. I really wish she would. Like, Nate obviously likes Abby. I totally understand that Abby kind of wants to take a break from relationships and stuff. And she just wants to play the field and date around and not be in a committed relationship. Like, she doesn't want to label anything. I totally understand that. You know, after what she went through with Ben and... Arturo and that other guy that she was kind of dating that helped her with that little dating app that turned out to be some human trafficking mess. Like, I don't blame her for wanting to take a break. Don't get me wrong, especially what happened with her and Scott. I don't blame her for wanting to take a, a break from guys. You know, I don't blame her. And But my issue was I felt like she led Nate on, though, because... I mean, she did tell him from the beginning that she really didn't want a relationship and he kept pursuing her. But when they slept together and they had dinner together, he was under the impression that, you know, she was finally coming around. They were going to date. But then she turned the tables on him and was like, um, d you know, dinner was just dinner. You know what I mean? That's all it was. And you could tell his feelings was hurt because he thought it was moving towards something more. Um, I feel like and, and I hate that she just, you know, keeps Nate on as a date, you know, whenever she wants him to come with her to some function or whatever. Nate needs to stop chasing after Abby. If you want something serious, he needs to just go find somebody else that wants what he wants. You know what I mean? Like, stop trying to get Abby to change her mind and move on to somebody who wants what you want. You know, that, that that's on the same page as you because Abby clearly is not on that wave. Like, clearly. So, anyway, everybody getting ready for this little bachelor, bachelorette, co ed party for Lola and Kyle. Mariah was trying to, you know, do something quick to tell Sharon about the co ed party because she, you know, Sharon didn't know, obviously, that Ray was going to be there. Ray, he annoys me. Like, he is so insecure. And I totally get why, because of the whole Mia Arturo situation. But ever since he found out about Sharon and Adam's past and stuff like that, he was insecure from day one when he found out. You know what I mean? And yes, what he said was somewhat true about Adam manipulating her and stuff like that. But Sharon was totally committed to Ray. Ray was the one who kept, oh, you're letting Adam manipulate you. Oh, he, He's the one who kept bringing Adam up every second of the day while they were together. Every minute he kept bringing Adam up. Let me tell you something. I'm a firm believer in it, that if you keep accusing me of something like cheating or thinking about somebody else, eventually that's what I'm going to do because you keep accusing. And that's what Ray kept doing while they were a couple. He kept bringing up Adam every five seconds and his insecurities kept showing. Like nobody has to keep coddling you and letting you know that you're the only one. You're the only one. Like, come on now. Yeah, Sharon is now allowing Adam to manipulate her and stuff, and she clearly has feelings for him, but when she was with Ray, she was totally committed to Ray. Ray was the one who kept being all insecure, like some little jealous Betty or whatever, some bitter Betty, acting all jealous every five seconds over Adam. And his little comment to Sharon today was so was so unnecessary, telling her, oh, I'm pretty sure if you knew the part, if the party was co-ed, would you have brought Adam? That comment was unnecessary. It was unnecessary. She was at the party by herself. Honestly, I don't even know why Sharon was even there. She shouldn't even have been invited. She's not friends with Lola. They're not really close. She only know Lola, obviously, through Ray. Her and Kyle are not close. So why was she even there? For what part? What? Just for angst between her and Ray? Ray is so petty. It's like, why do you have the need to bring Adam up every five seconds? 
And that's what he does. It's like his mind is consumed with Adam. Like, grow up. Um, so anyway, Lola. Lola is another one who annoys me. She took it upon herself, obviously, to invite Summer. And since it's a co-ed party, we all knew Summer would invite Theo. Kyle, obviously, was not happy about either one of them being there. Mainly Theo, obviously. He wanted them gone. But Lola gonna sit there and tell Kyle, oh, ignore them. If you wanted Kyle to ignore them, why did you invite them? I don't understand Lola. I understand that she's forever grateful to Summer for saving her life and donating her part of her liver or whatever the case may be. I get it. You're grateful, but you've already thanked her. You were, you know, already showed her your gratitude. You didn't have to invite her to your party. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure she's probably going to be invited to the wedding as well. You didn't have to invite her to your party. If you're so grateful, send her a gift basket, a singing telegram, an edible arrangement. Send her something like that. You don't invite her to your party. Why would you want your fiance's ex-wife at your bachelorette party? Like, why? And then you're going to tell him to ignore them? If you want him to ignore them, they, sh they shouldn't have been invited. Like Lola sitting there telling Kyle, oh, they're a part of, oh, Summer's a part of our life. And no, she's not a part of your life. Not at all. Yeah, y'all live in the same town, so you're bound to see each other. And yes, Kyle does work with her. But technically, as of this moment, they work on different things at Jabo. So yeah, they work for the same company, but they're not working together. So technically, she's not a part of y'all life. Only reason Lola thinks that she's a part of their life is because Lola keeps inserting Summer and everything. Stop doing it. Stop inviting her. Stop engaging in conversation with her. And what annoys me about Summer and Theo is they were sitting there the whole time at the party with attitudes and Abby was noticing it because Abby was getting hostile because she didn't want Summer there anyway. Because, you know, she's Lola's cheerleader. So, of course, Summer didn't, you know, Abby didn't want Summer there. And she overheard Summer and Theo talking and Summer was like, oh, Kyle and Lola act like they got this great love story. I mean, why did you even come if y'all not even happy for them and you don't want to see them married or you're happy? Why would you even show up? Why would you accept the invitation to come to the party? Clearly, you don't care for them. You're not happy for them. So why go? Why? Why go? You should have stayed at home or did something else. And please don't even get me started on Theo. The way Theo is acting with Kyle, he acts like some, instead of an ex-friend, he acts like some bitter, jealous ex-girlfriend that Kyle cut off. That's how, that's, that's how Theo's acting, like some bitter ex that, that felt jilted. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how he's coming off, because he feels like Kyle dismisses him, and oh, he treats Theo like gum stuck under his shoe. I'm like, first of all, Kyle was all for Theo and him continuing their friendship. But Theo wants Kyle to go back to the party and Kyle that he was in New York and he keeps holding this little stupid secret over his head. Apparently, some girl who was 17, um, she almost died. Probably because they were partying with her. Maybe one of those designer drugs she took almost killed her. So Kyle had to pay off the father. And, you know, that's, I guess, the secret that Theo's holding over Kyle's head. I don't get why Kyle and, you know, Kyle got mad nervous when they were doing the toast and Jack and all them were doing the toast and Ray was welcoming Kyle to the family. And when Theo got up to grab, you know, the microphone and stuff, Kyle kept trying to rush him off the stage, you know, rush him off the microphone or whatever. Kyle needs to just tell Jack what happened. He needs to just tell Lola what happened. He probably not going to tell Lola because he's afraid that she probably going to leave him. Or whatever. What you did in New York is what you did in New York. You know, it was a minute ago. It's been taken care of. Just tell the truth. Like, stop letting this boy blackmail you. Because now he think he got some type of power over you and he's going to use it. Um, And of course, Summer and Abby get into it. Bringing up past relationships like Austin and all this mess. And they start throwing water on each other. Ice buckets and all <laughs> Like, just acting real petty and, ca and catty. Acting, you know, instead of being a, the adults that they are, they prefer to act like their shoe sizes. Like, teenagers. I'm like, get over it. Like, why would you act a fool at somebody's party? 
You know what I mean? So, of course, Mariah and Tessa had to come over and try to break it up. I'm like, they need to go sit down. They is too old for that. And that's your niece. Like, that's Abby's niece. Like, that's really how y'all acting? Like, school children over past relationships and past misdeeds? All of y'all got dirt, so I don't see why y'all doing all that mudslinging. Like, get over it. But anyway, it was a decent episode today. Hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about today's episode. I will see y'all all later. Peace.